Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. If you're into running and you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications just down below. You'll then be notified when new videos have been launched. So I've received a lot of questions recently from people who've just started running, new runners who are taking advantage of kind of being in this sort of lockdown situation right now and they want to improve their fitness and they want to take advantage of being able to get out running Obviously in some areas of the world right now, you are not allowed to do that. Please make sure you do stay within the regulations in your area. But if you are lucky and you're able to go outside or are being urged to exercise once a day, then running is a really great option. Aside from running shoes, perhaps, you can pretty much just get out and run in whatever gear you've got. I would though advise on getting some half decent running shoes. It will make your experience a whole lot more enjoyable. I kind of review running shoes here on this channel, all sorts of different things, trail shoes, road shoes, all different sorts of prices and price points. But today I'm gonna to focus on some stuff that's a little more accessible for perhaps those of you who are just getting into this fantastic sport or pastime or whatever you want to call it. So running shoes really do act as some protection to kind of save you a little bit from the wear and tear of the terrain that you may be running on. It could even save you from the terrain as well. If you're running on areas where there's lots of rocks, stones, branches, things like that, it can actually save your feet. Also, they'll protect you from moisture, from the cold. And if you're running in a much warmer climate, it could be that you want something breathable to help your foot breathe. With this in mind, which shoes would I recommend at £100 limit? I think for me, first up would be the Pegasus 35 or the 36. Both the 35 and 36 have the same midsole and outsole. So if you're new to those sort of terminologies, the midsole's this kind of area here on the shoe. It normally comprises of some type of foam. This sits kind of underneath your foot to compress and take away some of the pounding of the road. So as your foot kind of strikes the floor, this foam here in the midsole will compress a little bit and take away some of that impact. This Pegasus 35 is actually quite a sentimental shoe for me. It brings back lots of nice memories. I remember picking this up in London in a store at an incredibly cheap price. I think it was about 50 pounds and I was really, really happy with that. I got it while I was on my honeymoon and I just can't get rid of it because of that fact. I can't throw it away. It's got too many memories. Some aesthetic differences. This is the Pegasus 36 from Nike. It's got a slightly shorter tongue here and quite a lot thinner, but the general premise is the same with these kind of fly wires that come across the top of the foot to kind of give you some good lockdown. This rubber kind of section here is what we refer to as the outsole. The Pegasus series tend to be quite a good kind of middle of the road shoe really. You've got some decent traction here, all these different rubber lugs that act as grip to give you some decent traction on all sorts of surfaces. I think I've used these shoes on all sorts of different areas really, on road, I've used them on some sort of less technical trails, running up towards some old castle battlements, that kind of thing. I think for daily use, the Pegasus delivers a great all-round package, really. It's got a lovely upper, it's kind of soft, relatively breathable. I don't think it's the most breathable shoe in the world, so if you are running in hotter climates, it could be a little bit warm. That side, lockdown's good. The upper section here, we call the upper this kind of piece of material right over the top of the foot, provides some good protection, breathable enough, and it helps to kind of lock you down on top of the midsole. Either the Nike Pegasus 35 or the 36, has reasonably good width up here in the toe box area. It's the toe box because it's like a box for your toes. I think a running shoe for daily use, you want a decent amount of room. You don't want it to be overly snug here in the toe box area. Sometimes running shoe stores will recommend you go like a half size up if you're buying a running shoe. I don't think that's always the case. I think you need to go on a shoe by shoe basis. If you can, try the shoes on. I know that's difficult at the moment what with online being the only way you're able to probably get some running shoes. But try and shop somewhere where you can at least send them back if they're not right. They do need to be right. If a shoe just simply isn't the right fit for you when you're running, it's not gonna be an enjoyable experience whatsoever. So you need to be thinking about the length of the shoe, but also the width here in the toe box area. Remember, everybody's feet are different. I think my left and right feet are slightly different. That's what makes me all the more perfect, right? Don't know if my wife would agree with that. So this shoe from Nike's got a air unit all the way through the midsole here. Helps to provide a bit more kind of longevity to the foam that's in the midsole. I typically will get the Pegasus series up to about 
300 miles, I think, before they really start to lose some of their luster. I've seen these on sale recently for as little as £60, so I think that makes a really, really great value daily shoe. The Nike Zoom Pegasus 36. Next shoe up is the New Balance Beacon. So this is version one of the shoe. I tell you, it really pops, doesn't it, in terms of that colour. Again, this has a lovely, soft and flexible upper. It's kind of roomy, but without it being overly spacious inside. It's not too generous in terms of room inside the shoe itself. Now, the midsole and the outsole are a little different here than on the Pegasus 36. This stuff's called Fresh Foam. It's another sort of variant of kind of EVA type foam. And you'll see that there's only a few rubber sections here where it's quite different on the Pegasus 36. Some of the outsole here on the Beacon is actually just midsole. I haven't found that it sort of wears away any quicker, really. Although I would suggest this is a lighter shoe than the Pegasus 36. Yeah, there's definitely quite a considerable difference there. This one's much lighter. Even though it's less rubber, I found traction just as good in these, and they're really, really comfortable across the board. I did find some aesthetic wear to the outsole on the Fresh Foam Beacon, but I really do think it's just visual. The shoe still feels really great. I found these to be a little more breathable than the Pegasus 36. There's just a little less material here in the upper. That aside, it still feels Nice and comfortable, it's just a nice simple shoe really. Not too many bells and whistles. Lockdown was good from the slightly more stretchy laces that you've got here. Overall, I can't really recommend this one enough. I found it available for as little as 60 pounds if you can still find the version one, though the version two does seem to be a little more readily available and that can get up to sort of 70 or 80 pounds. Only one minor gripe I've really had with the Fresh Rain Beacon is that you might need to glue in the insoles. They do seem to sort of move around a little bit sometimes. They're quite thin, um, a little bit of spray adhesive and job done. Perhaps one for you if you're in a slightly warmer climate and you need a upper that's a little bit more breathable. I've run some quite fast 5Ks in this shoe, so I wouldn't say it's just a daily trainer. You can probably use this one for a variety of different distances if you wanted to. That side though, a great daily trainer. With the next shoe, I'm getting close to my sort of 100 pound limit really. I would suggest spending some decent money if you can on a running shoe. It will provide you with a lot more enjoyment. It might be your kind of gateway into this sort of pastime. So if you can spend a reasonable amount, you will benefit from it in the long run. And that's not a really corny joke, by the way. I just kind of keep realizing how many little phrases and analogies there are. They're all about running that I never realized. You know, it's first past the post. Well, that might be a horse racing one. So third shoe is the Hoka One One Rincon. Now, someone said to me the other day- It's not One One, it's One One. It, as far as I'm aware from people at Hoka, it is One One, right? So that's what I'm going with. The Hoka One One Rincon. So quite a number of more experienced runners think of this as a more of a sort of tempo or up-tempo kind of shoe. Faster shoe, but I feel it's good for daily training also. Again, it's ridiculously light. Actually, this is probably the lightest of all three shoes that I've looked at so far. You might think, that's crazy, there's a massive amount of foam here, but actually when you reach inside the shoe, the foam actually kind of creeps up around the side of your foot. It's not actually all underfoot foam. It's very similar to the Beacon from New Balance, as we looked at a moment ago, where you've got this kind of exposed midsole and just small sections of rubber on the outsole. Again, it's a little more expensive than the other two shoes we've just looked at. This one's probably closer to 80 or 90 pounds. One thing I would suggest with this shoe, be very careful if you have a wide foot. It's quite a narrow shoe, actually, certainly through the midsection of the shoe towards the toe box. I was about okay in it, but if you have a very wide foot, it might not be the one for you. Midsole here isn't too pillow-like. I found it provided a really good platform for most runners. The upper mesh here is lovely and breathable. I'd say it's probably about the most breathable of all three shoes we've looked at today. I think it's probably the most airy and lightweight of all three. All three of these shoes are really reasonable in terms of stability. I think that if you're a relatively neutral runner and you don't have any issues kind of with your running gait, those mechanics of running. I think that all three of them could work for you. The tongue's nicely padded. I found no issues getting a good kind of lockdown with this shoe. So check that one out, the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. I found lots and lots of runners recently asking me questions about the Nike. The recycling vehicle always turns up when I make a video. Lots and lots of runners recently have got hold of me and asked me questions in regards to my video on the Nike React Infinity Run. So lots of people seem to be interested in this shoe as something they can use on a kind of daily basis. I think it's probably Nike's 
advertising of the shoe in terms of reducing injuries. I suggest yes, it is a great shoe for that. It's a great daily shoe, something you can use kind of all the time. There's a huge amount of midsole foam here, as you can probably see, and a really soft and supple upper. That aside, it's still an expensive shoe. This one goes way above my £100 limit today. It's just a wild card I wanted to kind of add in at the end. So this is a great shoe. Perhaps if you've been running for a little while and you're kind of a little more invested in the hobby, it might be something you could go for that you can utilize as a kind of daily shoe in your rotation. A number of runners you'll find will have a number of shoes that they use on a sort of a rotation basis. So rather than just using the same shoe every single day, they'll have some different shoes that they can switch in and out depending on what they're doing. I try to do that as much as I can really to give certain shoes a break. I do find that if you use a shoe for maybe three or four days at max, the cushioning needs a bit of a rest. So I tend to do two or three days in a shoe and then use something else. I hope this has been useful guys. If you are thinking about starting running or you have recently got out and started running during this lockdown period. Again, remember what I said, please do check the rules and regulations in your local area to make sure you're not contravening them. Many areas are still enabling us to go out running, which is fantastic. I'm certainly enjoying doing that and being responsible with it, making sure that I'm adhering to social distancing rules. When I'm not doing that though, I'm making sure I'm spending my time really, really wisely. I can recommend these actually. Resident Evil 4, I've been playing on the PlayStation 4. Uh, a couple of run-throughs, I've really enjoyed playing that. I used to really enjoy the Resident Evil games, what, sort of 20 years ago or so. <sighs> feel old now. And this one does really hark back to some of those early gaming experiences that I had and really enjoyed. It's got all of those things that I loved, but some new stuff too. And God of War here as well. I've really been enjoying this, the early stages of the game. Graphics are pretty incredible on the PlayStation 4 Pro. Aside from that, I've been watching my Jason King box set. You can't beat a bit of Peter Wingard in the morning while you're eating your breakfast. Hope you enjoyed the video today, guys, and thanks for watching through to the end. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below as to when new videos are launched. Give the video a thumbs up like and comment below with any of your questions. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.